I'm Janine. I'm the academic researcher here at Founderland. And over the last couple of months, we've been working on looking into gender equality, decent work, and economic growth. More specifically, we were looking in conducting research on the experiences of female founders because Founder, Founderland is an organization that supports this group. So yeah, Founderland basically supports female founders who face obstacles tied to their gender and ethnicity. And basically the goal of Founderland is to build a more inclusive inter and intersectional standard for entrepreneurs. And um, what exactly does that even mean? So basically, um, even from the research we've already conducted, we've come to realize that female founders are not only discriminated against or face obstacles based off of gender, but also their ethnicity, socioeconomic status, migration status, and various other factors. And so this research was extremely critical for that. And this is why um, the open call was relevant for our work, because it allowed us to gain insights directly from the founders that we support, which enabled us to also find areas that where we can further support them, onboard allies to help the group as well, but also at the same time allowed us to develop further proof points um, so that we're able to then also attract um, other allies, government entities to help create this change that we would like to see happen in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, so basically through this research, our main aims were to understand the current entrepreneurial ecosystem, especially as it related to the experiences of women of color founders. In addition to that, we also worked really hard on trying to understand and raise awareness around the challenges and opportunities that this particular group of founders face, particularly in Berlin, because that was where the research was predominantly conducted. And also it is one of the main entrepreneurial hubs in Germany. And then in addition to that, we wanted to engage with stakeholders along the way so that we're able to actually actively push for more positive change that will help to positively impact these underrepresented founders or uh, underrepresented founders as a whole. So uh, with regards to the citizen social science research, the method was actually very helpful for us. Uh, we ended up finding out through the process that having our co-researchers who were also women of color founders interview other women of color founders allowed for an opportunity for more openness during the interviews. And instead of it feeling like the traditional Q&A standard, it allowed them to be more open with their responses, share candidly the experiences that they had, rather than potentially what would typically happen in a normal research interview setting. In addition to that, we also found it really helpful to work have workshops directly with the FH um, Fachhochschule Potsdam team, who are there consistently throughout the process to give us insights into the coding process, insights into the interview process, how to properly conduct interviews in a way that allows for more authentic responses without leading by the interviewer. And also at the same time, we did an impact vision workshop, which was also extremely critical for us to understand who are the stakeholders that we're conducting this research for, what exactly do they want to get out of it, and also how we can go about making this even more collaborative of an experience and having everyone give their input. And of course, on the flip side, uh, not everything was peaches and roses the entire time. So we did face a few challenges. So for example, because we were doing this with co-researchers who weren't necessarily fully on the project because these were also female founders who had their own businesses, from time to time, there was a little bit of an issue ensuring consistency across the board, as well as ensuring the same quality standards of interviews. So obviously if there's one person who's constantly conducting the interviews, they're able to quickly pick up on maybe particular points that we would want to dive further into, or, oh, this was a keyword that the interviewee said, let's dive into that a little bit. But that wasn't necessarily something that you could do across the board because that obviously comes with experience of doing many interviews. Um, but nevertheless, it was a little bit of a challenge, but we still were able to get really impactful, really beneficial research from that. And in addition to that, it was also a bit of a challenge because it was such a collaborative method, finding the right balance between collaboration and sometimes too many cooks spoiling the broth or too much input. So that was a little bit of a challenge from time to time. However, we were able to eventually work that out. It just came down to understanding the types of tasks that had to be allocated to a group versus things that maybe had to be a little bit um, done by one particular person in general. So that's a little bit about um, the research, but overall it was a really positive experience um, and it was extremely helpful and critical for us. And we know that we would love to continue doing the research in this method again in the future, because as you can see in this particular quote, one of our, um, our interviewees had said that the interviews felt like they were just a very 
ter therapeutic experience and it allowed for the interview participants to have a safe space to share their experiences and give their insights, which they ne did not necessarily always have the opportunity to. And because of that, it ended up, like I said previously, resulting in some really great results for us as well. So that's a little bit about what we did. And yeah, looking forward to hear what everyone else did and getting your questions. Thank you. One of the powers of, of citizen science and citizen social science is clearly to to bring out very marginalized perspectives, right? And they are not always representative of, of a broader population, but on the contrary, they make something visible. So um, I wonder, maybe all of you want to just comment on this a bit, whether this kind of strict social scientific representativity is still a problem uh, for your work. And I believe for us, it actually was a benefit because we were specifically looking at a particular demographic of entrepreneurs. So we were looking at women of color founders. So it ended up working out quite well in our favor because it was a group that traditionally doesn't have any research done on them specifically. So for us, I saw it as a benefit. And also maybe the only thing that may not have been as representative was that a lot of the founders that we interviewed were in the very early phases of their journey. And so it wasn't, it was a little bit challenging to find out what happens once you do get the money, once your, your company is now four or five years down the line. And those founders were just a little bit harder to get a hold of. And I think just because of the networks, a lot of we just had the connections towards a lot of these early stage founders and not these later stage. Um, however, I think the longer we do this, the likelihood is that we will have these founders as well. So I think for us, it worked, it, it worked well. Janine, do you want to talk about uh, how you're planning to disseminate the results? Sure. Um, I guess the first part of the question you asked initially was how we contacted everyone. And so we went actually through our network, um, particularly because Founderland has over 300 founders that are women of color. So we started off with that particular group of people. And then from there, kind of tried to use the snowball effect of, hey, if you know anyone that would potentially be interested, please let, them, let us know. So we did it that way. And the co-researchers, we also took from within our own community as well. So that really helped to kind of streamline that. <laughs> yeah, we would like it to be as interactive as possible. So it's going to be a digital report. When people go on it, we wanted to also have the various perspectives of different key stakeholders or ecosystem players in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So based off of the data that we've gathered, having that data be applied to the various groups. So for example, we have investors, we've got the founders themselves, we have allies and we have government institutions. And basically, for example, when it comes to the topic of funding, we have data that specifically relates to biases and prejudices that founders have faced from investors and presenting that data in a way that's digestible for them so that it can also help debunk some of their unconscious biases that they do have during when they oftentimes approach these founders. And then on the flip side, having data as well for the founders specifically about, hey, this is what other founders face, and these are some of the things that they potentially have said has helped them to overcome these biases and prejudices. So we're really trying to disseminate and distill the information into various perspectives to allow it to be digestible to all groups and also to be impactful for all of the stakeholders involved as well.